nice weather again today. Although I think I spent too much time capturing, I guess, drone shots. It looked really nice in my opinion, all the trees and stuff. And what's going on today? I guess in terms of drones, it seems like there was a lot of, I guess, military related drones in the news. How about this one? This one says, amid tensions with China, Taiwan shows off military drones. Taiwan displayed its self-developed drone technology Tuesday amid rising concerns over China's threat to use force to assert its claim to the self-governing island republic. The National Chengsheng Institute of Science and Technology, which develops military technology, offered a rare look at the Qian Hsiang drone design to destroy enemy radars and other unmanned combat aerial vehicles. A dozen of the single-use drones officially termed loitering munitions are carried on a truck. Launched with a built-in rocket, they are guided by a propeller engine before crashing into their targets. A lot of these types of, I guess, suicide drones per se are kamikaze ones, huh? As they say, everyone's been using them. It says, while the US and others have long used drones in the targeting of alleged terrorists and others, they have proved especially important in the Russian war in Ukraine. Moscow has imported drones from Iran, while Kyiv has found success with inexpensive Bayraktar TB2 unmanned aerial vehicles from Turkey, which carry lightweight laser-guided bombs. China, meanwhile, has forged ahead with developing its own drones, some models of which have been exported. It will never end at this rate, huh? Everyone just trying to one-up each other on tech and all that, although I guess it probably is better for the countries to develop their own tech during a war versus relying on another place. With that thought, this was kind of interesting to think about and I don't see how this would be feasible. Remember all that story on how there were drones made by Iran? People were saying they had parts from various countries like Canada and stuff like that. Well, this one was saying there's actually rules and stuff about quote, dual purpose, I guess, usage for items. And because in these cases where they could be used for military applications and it has to be classified as such. And I don't know how you're gonna do this. This one says, why the popularity of drones means civilian technology is ending up on the battlefield. Engine made by Canadian company Bombardier, recreational products Rotax, found in drone used against Ukraine. And here it says, regulating dual use products. BRP Rotax said their engines are not designed for military purposes and that they are not listed as dual use items. But according to experts like Lalit Barrett, these engines can still qualify as dual use products. These are items that while intended for civilians can be easily retrofitted for military use. The government of Canada describes dual use goods as having quote, the potential to be used or modified to produce weapons and military items. So wouldn't that mean everything, like literally everything could be used in a military application? But they say here, items that could be used for both civilian or military purposes could include a broad range of products such as cars and smartphones, which introduces challenges to regulation. It would be logistically impossible and ineffective to require an authorization for the export of such common household articles to countries that are not under sanctions. Imagine that having to classify every single smartphone, for example, as military use because it could have, I guess, dual purpose and all that. I think at least this is a clear example how you can't make stuff like this way too broad. Otherwise, it affects everybody just because of a few people. It might work in certain situations, I guess, like let's say a drone because it's still niche for the most part. There's not many people using it, but imagine like there on items that virtually almost everybody uses on an everyday basis, you try to do that, I don't think it's gonna go very well. And I was just catching up on the news about that FTX cryptocurrency exchange company, the one that went bankrupt in an elaborate scam, I guess you could say, which people are calling a Ponzi scheme and it's one of the worst in history. And it seemed like most of the news update revolved around companies and figures that had money attached to this company, which they have to try to get back in some way now. Like for example, this one says tokens of Alameda back Defy projects Maps.me and Oxygen locked up at FTX. Maps.me and Oxygen, two decentralized finance projects backed by disgraced entrepreneur Sam Bankman, Fry's beleaguered Alameda research said in a statement Tuesday that over 95% of the overall supply of their tokens are being held at bankrupt crypto exchange FTX. The statement also said that the project teams are considering all options on how to protect their platforms and have hired legal advisors to help. In January 2021, 
Alameda Research led a $50 million investment in Maps.me, a mobile alternative to Google Maps with about 100 million users. One month later, it had led $40 million investment rounds in Defy Broker Oxygen with the hope of integrating Oxygen into Maps.me. And then other articles like here says, who are the big names affected by the FTX crash? Tom Brady, Ontario's teacher pension plan, Steph Curry, and more. Imagine having your pension plan a part of this. From what I gathered too, they said this teacher pension plan they invested, I guess, little amounts of money, fortunately, so it won't be that bad. But I was just researching it too. Is it true there's actually a stadium named after this company, like an FTX arena or something like that in the US? I was like, wow, how big was this company down there in terms of, I guess, their position? And one thing I was thinking about, just in terms of the story as I was reading it, as well as the general commentary I've seen online and so forth, it seems like a lot of people aren't clear in terms of what the story really is about. Because a lot of people are comparing this to, let's just say, I don't know, a Bitcoin or something like that, like a cryptocurrency. It's related in the industry, but it's not really the same thing. And I was thinking how to explain this. Just from what I read, I guess the easiest way to think about it is, imagine a bank that took billions of dollars from people. And with that, normally you're supposed to, for example, offer them a service or something like that, interest rate, if they want to pull it out, they can pull it out. But what happened was this guy basically took billions of dollars from people and he used their billions of dollars to, let's just say, gamble it in a casino and then he lost. Now, imagine there were so many people saying, okay, I want to take my money out now. He has no money to give people, so that's basically the main thing about this story. It's more like a corrupt bank, per se, than an actual currency. Now, obviously that affects, I guess, everything else because it's related in a sense in terms of the topic, but again, the scam here is more about like that, like a bad bank, for example. That's actually how fundamentally a lot of banks operate too, am I not mistaken, where they try to get people to put their money in it with the incentive of things, for example, like convenience or interest rate. And then afterwards, they use that money to lend to people for things like, let's just say, a mortgage and all that. But I guess, like there, if you're a bad bank, you took everyone's money, like I said, and you invested it in some, I don't know, casino gambling or something like that, and you lost it, that'll be a disaster, right? That's, again, that should be the main focus, in my opinion, in this story. And I think that's an important point because if you treat it more like, say, an investment scam or a bad bank, then there should already be laws and stuff for you to swiftly investigate this, correct? Versus actually focusing on things like it's a quote cryptocurrency and there's nothing they can do because it isn't really about that. Again, it's more about someone scamming people out of their money in a financial institution type of way. Wouldn't that be something too, if they use all that technicality to say, hey, there's nothing on crypto law and all that, and they don't actually investigate everyone that's involved, which sounds like there's a lot of big names potentially there. That's kind of scandalous. That would be a little unfortunate too, huh? If they say, oh, can't investigate anything.
Alright, see you guys later.